Excellent times, everyone. You can now get a camera with a global shutter for only 50 freedom dollars or about 75 bucks plus postage and handling in Australian, like real money. Uh, these are normally hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. And yes, there are cheap modules on eBay like these, and I've looked at them, but they'll be less than 60 FPS. They'll have really low resolution, like one megapixel. They'll be bad at low light. They'll have an integrated lens, or they'll just be fake, like so much of it is. Even then, they still cost like 60 bucks from China. So to backtrack sli slightly, if you don't know what rolling shutter is, check out the link uh, maybe here um, and in the description where Destin from Smutter Every Day does a great job of going through what rolling shutter is and covers global shutter as well. Uh, or in this longer video from Steve Mould, he covers a bit about shutters in an interesting way and he also does four more very interesting things that might creep you out but were really good. Now the long and the short of it is that if you've got an image, a global shutter reads all of those pixels, say if each of these dots is a pixel, at once. A normal rolling shutter, as you get in you know, this phone camera and most other phone cameras, reads pixels one at a time because it has to address each pixel one at a time. And uh, global shutters do this by storing an analog buffered uh, read of the data, so to say, or at least in this case that's my understanding. So anyway, last week on Thursday the 9th, Eben Upton from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, sorry if I massacred your name there, mate, uh, released the Global Shutter Camera, which is this bad boy. And it's 50 bucks. It's, uh, I read it on Slashdot. I was absolutely blown away. So 1.6 megapixel, uh, which is 1440 by 1080, or it's actually uh, 1456 by 1088, true, but you know how cameras work. Or I hope you do, I don't. It's based on the Sony IMX2196, L. no it's not actually, I'm telling fibs. It is based on the Sony IMX296LQR-C sensor. Uh, it does 60 FPS, but it's purported to have uh, capture image, to be able to capture an image in as little as 30 microseconds. So in theory, it should be able to do 33,000 frames per second, although that might be 30 microseconds per pixel. So I uh, like always, it probably depends on your resolution. And it really depends on what you hook it up to. So with the two-lane connector uh, on a the two-lane CSI that you get on a Raspberry Pi, you are quite limited there. So um, we'll have to play around with that in the future maybe, but it can do 60 FPS at uh, 1440 by 1080 resolution. It's got large pixel size, so it's quite good for low light. It's got C and CS lens compatibility because it's got an adapter that comes with it. It has 10-bit output for HDR, and it's supported by Raspberry Pi hardware and software. Uh, with the software, it's always recommended to update first, and they say being on Bullseye or Debian 11 at a minimum. Now, some might consider this 1440 by uh, 1080 resolution low, and yeah, kind of is, like 4K is getting pretty popular. I'm recording this in 4K or 8K, I don't even know anymore. Uh, but it's also high resolution for a global shutter, and it's excellent resolution for AI or otherwise machine learning applications. The reason is high resolution means more pixels, which means more processing, uh, aka a heavier, hotter, and more expensive bit of hardware. So we're going to get this set up in a few ways. We've got a few things to go with it. We, of course, got a Raspberry Pi. Now, I got these from a store that you might recognize from the labels. That It was the only store that had them left, but they shipped them really quickly. Uh, I ordered it on Friday. It arrived today on Tuesday, so excellent shipping time. I already had one of these lying around. To go with it, I got myself a 6mm lens. I'll explain the reason for the 6mm lens later on. Grabbed a random SD card that I had laying around. I got this little Pi Zero mount for it um, because I'm eventually going to stick it to that other Pi Zero that's dead if I can get it going. Grabbed a spare power supply from my pile of stuff because, you know, rule out any equations like my other power supply being faulty. And I got this awesome little uh, kind of gorilla leg style tripod. I've actually got a pile of these, but this was about three pounds, so I couldn't really say no. We're going to put all these together in a minute, and I'm going to A, take a still image with it, B, stream to a web page, and C, record video. So after that, I'll show you some video side by side of a few things taken with this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is above you recording right now and with this side by side, and then you sh should get a good idea of what the global shutter can actually do, especially when you're comparing you know, the skill sets of each, because those are really good at one thing, these are really good at another thing. Um, it's not for everyone, but my use case is twofold. So firstly, it's really hard to get good pictures of lightning. That explains the six millimeter camera. So once I've got this all going, I'm gonna put it in some enclosure. We get some great storms around here and have it just pointing up at the sky and maybe set up an LDR or something and do um, some kind of 
trigger for it, I'm not too sure. Or have it constantly recording, but keep the five seconds before the trigger and 20 seconds after or something like that. Second, uh, I'd love to get some really high FPS shots, even if black and white, even if it's 640 by 480, I'd love to um, hack this up a little bit and figure out what can be done with it. And that'll be a project for another time. So if anyone does know of how to get higher FPS, and I have seen some um, other Sony uh, sensors modified to do that, but let me know. Similarly, the code that I use uh, to do these examples, I'm gonna put on my GitHub, so there'll be a link in the description below if you just wanna copy and paste it and use it for yourself. Unboxing, let's have a look at the camera itself first. We'll slide all these other things out of the way. It is a tiny little box because there's a tiny little camera. And a tiny little screwdriver. Excellent, that's exactly what I didn't expect. And there we have it with some desiccant in there. So it comes with a little lens cap, obviously. It's a bit oily, which is not a bad thing. Take the lens cap off, treat it like you would any normal camera, respect that you don't want dust getting into that lens. That's as we would expect. There is this little ring. Um, that's your uh, CS to C adapter, depending on whether or not you want to use it. I'm gonna leave those screwed on for now. You can see that this is clamped directly onto the sensor unit, so that's quite a good design, I reckon. Uh, it's just that clamping pin there. It's got what you want, a standard thread hole to put on any little mount, like this little tripod I got for it. 15 centimeter cable. You've got some debug pins on the back there that read XTR, MASS, XVS, SDA, 3.3, SCL, XHS, and ground. So we know what those are for, but we'll use what's included. It's got a little bit of weight to it, about 30 grams or so, but it, it feels very manageable. Uh, and this screwdriver is for tightening this, which is not tight for some reason. Maybe it's so, like, oh, you might want to mount it on an angle. That makes sense. Pretty neat having this tiny uh, gnome sized screwdriver though. Don't have many of those. We do of course have this awesome little plastic mount and all the screws that go with it. So this will allow me to actually mount it on the Pi Zero. I can even stick it to it, which is pretty cool. We won't worry about that one for now though. And then we have this excellent little uh, lens here. So, Open and close near and far, it's a little bit odd. We might have to play with it. Uh, six mil, it's got an IR filter on it, but I'm guessing you can remove that. That might even, no, I'm not sure what the open and close, ah, that's gonna be, open and close is probably gonna be the aperture. Um, that makes sense, so we'll tinker with that. Three megapixel lens, uh, doesn't quite make sense because that's not how lenses are measured exactly, but it's a six mil lens, so it's nice wide angle. We'll almost certainly take that IR cut filter out somehow for the sake of recording the lightning, but for now, a little bit greasy. That is not a bad thing. Pretty much what you expect. Now, it's well made, in my opinion. It's well made, it's good quality. It comes from a reputable source, at least in my opinion. It's got everything I want for what I'm doing, which is what I'm gonna show you. It may not be suitable for you. So, now let's move on. I'm gonna do a montage of assembling it, then flashing uh, the SD card with the latest Raspbian, booting it, updating it, and then we'll get to a bit of code. Alrighty. Well, assembly is pretty straightforward. That is actually it. Gets a little bit hefty once you got the lens and everything on there, but you know, it feels solid and it's still a good form factor. Um, however you want to mount this, I mean, that's damn near, looks like a SLR. Um, oh, sorry, DSLR or camera. It looks like a camera, you know where I'm getting with it. So we'll move on and we'll almost kick these together, flash the SD card and get booting. All right, so what we've done here is we've picked the 64-bit variant, which only works with the newer Pi hardware. We've uh, set the host name, enabled SSH, set our username and password, pre-configured the Wi-Fi settings, uh, set our locale, and then also turned off telemetry. I already had it turned off, I just showed you that. I turned it off there. Pick the SD card and hit right. So it's gonna wait for a few minutes that, for that now, as you can see here. And then we're gonna stick the SD card in, boot it up, and watch it do its thing.
what I've got here is the SD card that we've just flashed and as you can see pretty much set it all up just on the tripod mount with the cable going in the correct way around and I'm going to twiddle a bit with the little lens settings to get them set up how I want to record over here uh, but first of all we'll get to the code so let's boot it up should auto join the, join the Wi-Fi and I can SSH straight to it because I know what IP it's going to get on that network Now, once you have SSH to it, you'll want to check for a few things. App update and app upgrade. Make sure we have the latest version of everything on here. As you'd expect, there's some lib camera updates. Uh, so there's Pi camera, V for L2 interface, lib camera, uh, what else is there? Lib camera tools, lib camera apps. So yeah, this is um, they probably just released this update just after this came out and that's exactly what we need. We've got three bits of code we're going to use here. Uh, if we have a look, you can see I've copied the Pi Camera 2 library. Let's go alias ls equals ls color equals auto. There we go, that's a bit nicer. I can even search mod that one. I do not like this keyboard. So, first of all, we've got cap still. What we've got here is really simple import Pi Camera 2, import sleep. Set up the camera, set the config, and you can see we're specifying the maximum resolution here in our four by three format. You create the config. I'm then setting the controls. And I mean, you can actually, if you wanted, you can go. You get the idea. Uh, you can add it in there. I just did it separately because uh, I copied and pasted code to make it easier so that was quicker, but both work. Uh, you then start, you capture the file, and you stop. Now, what you can do as well is create a preview if need be. Uh, the capture takes a second or two for the camera to start up. If you're running a preview and you're capturing based on, say, a GPO input, um, you know, if you're doing a while loop sort of thing for it, then you want to have that null preview running in the background so the camera sub process is running and captures it instantly. But I ended up just using exposure time of 35,000 and a gain of six for most things. That seemed to work pretty well. And I got some good images that we'll show afterwards. We then moved on to the motion JPEG. So for this, I basically just copied uh, the example that comes with the library. And then what I've done is I've done a few fixes. So I got rid of the padding there. I made it a bit bigger. And then I've also specified that size and the same configuration as before. So that gives you a nice little uh, MJPEG stream. If we go have a look at that. Now, search modding those uh, executable like it did won't matter unless you actually have the shebang at the top. So I'm just running it manually for now. If we go back here, refresh that stream. You can see that. You can even turn it on. There we go. That's doing its thing and vibrating like all living hell. The MJPEG works pretty well. My CSS is pretty wrong. Lastly, we have the video. Now, this was actually the hardest part. So, mostly hard because this only supports one mode. And what I ended up doing is I call PyCam2.sensor modes and I grab the zero index. If you try to grab the one, it errors. If you do a for loop through all of the sensor modes, you'll see there is only one. And then what we do is we create a configuration using the only size and the only format at once. Uh, again, also, I've then set the frame rate to the only frame rate, which is 60 and loose change. You can usually exclude this video, but apparently different versions of this library, which is still in testing, result in different things. And what I've got here is a control with the maximum exposure time, if my math's right, for 60 FPS. And you just tweak the analog gain. But I did a few examples dropping that and raising it, and I'll show you those afterwards as well. Now, setting up the H.264 encoder, we're using this because we have a Pi 4V, so depending on what Pi you've got, you may want to use the H.264, H.265, or the default, uh, sorry, it doesn't have H.265, uh, or the MJPEG encoder. There's a few different options. 
We're then also using the FF input MPEG output. Otherwise, by default, it's just a raw H.264 uh, H264 file. So this gives a nice little wrapper in real time. Then we start recording with our config output file, and we're going to set quality as high. You can leave this out, and it will default to whatever the library currently defaults to, which I think is medium. Sleep for five seconds and stop recording. And as I've also noted here, if you're basing on a trigger and you want to capture things, you want to have a null preview so the process is running. But what you can do is also put it in continuous recording mode. So if you're using this for anything security related, or like I said, capturing lightning, continuous recording lets you capture the before and after as well, which is really good. And that works. So we'll pit put those videos up, but let's have a quick look at how I got this set up up close. We'll view those videos and then we'll record uh, with my Samsung and see what that looks like. All right, so this is the lovely little test setup we've got with the camera pointing here at black plastic with this little uh, Tesla coil sitting in front of it, which will give us some nice footage. So now I'm gonna get a pile of stills and videos with a few different settings uh, using the code that I've just shown you. And we'll have a look at what they look like after this and then compare it to my phone. I hope that gives you an idea of what this is actually capable of and how to get started with it with uh, a few different code examples, all command line web-based, of course. I don't like GUIs very much. And I hope it shows you what it's actually capable of. I'm not too sure at the time of recording this voiceover whether or not you're really going to see much of the difference, but I guarantee you a global shutter is awesome. Uh, Till next time, enjoy. Make sure you're looking after yourself. Have fun. And don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe, all those things you're supposed to do. Sorry, I'm so tired. I slept like four hours last night. So this might not make sense, much sense, but I re received this today, so I wanted to record it today. Till next time, take it easy. See you.